Hi, I'm Bobby James. And I'm Christina Singh, and we are Destiny. Welcome to our music inspiration series, Future Live Musicians. So, you're ready to start performing, or you're already booked for a show or a live stream. Congratulations. The final crucial step right before your show is the sound check. In this episode, you'll learn how to approach professional sound check and the necessary steps you should take to forward your gig before you get there. We'll cover technical riders, stage plots, running lines to the front of the house, all of that. We'll be joined by professional sound man, Jeremy Chu, who will show you how to get the most out of your sound check so you can sound awesome at your next show. Oh, hey, I'm Jeremy. I've been doing audio work for 32 years now. I work on shows from weddings all the way to stadium-sized concerts. The worst thing that a band can do getting to sound check is to waste time. When you do get to sound check, it is not time to socialize and talk amongst yourselves. It is time to get to work. There's a whole team of people that have worked for maybe hours before you getting your stage ready. So when you get there, make sure you guys get there on time and get to work. Set up your instruments, turn them on, do your patch, and let's go. So before we sound check, uh, which we've already done a line check previously, and a line check is just to make sure that everything is working. So any input signal and any output signal has already been tested, and so now we're ready for a sound check. Bobby, can I get the kick drum? Okay, and the snare drum. If you're struggling to hear on stage, no matter what you're struggling to listen to, do stop and ask for help. Try to include detail about what instrument it is and how much louder you like, let's say 20% of the piano. And your sound tech should be able to help you with that. But if you don't stop during sound check and make these requests, it is very difficult to change something when the tech doesn't know that that's your wish. and then play your kit. All right, thank you, thank you. During sound check time, do communicate with the sound tech that is operating your monitor about certain hand signs that you prefer to use so that he understands what it is that you want while you're on stage as it is very inconvenient to talk to your sound tech while you're singing. Now, communicating with the monitor tech, some examples for hand signals are guitar, bass, volume up, down, keyboards, microphone, up, down, things like that. Singers with vocal pedals. When you arrive to the venue, the sound technician team should be expecting that you're bringing a vocal box and whatever was stated in your rider. And they should have already prepared the patch for you. Christina, can I get your guitar? Oh, it's much better. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, let's get your mic checked there. This is my stock kind of wet with reverb and compression that I have going through my box. We're united, survivors, through all the pain. Such a feeling tonight that we'll never regret. Promise and heartbreak we live to forget. Oh no, love's gonna make it all right. Um, most of the time, depending on the event, the size of the event and how many other stages of entertainment there is, set times and flip times and green room space and all these kind of things. As an opening act, you must realize that your set time will be compromised if they need to. So just be prepared for that. No matter how heartbreaking it might be, you're still there, you're gonna perform, take that chance and just be happy about it. Usually the information is already shared before the show. A good time would be a month or two months ahead, just in case there's particular equipment that the production crew has to look for in terms of the agreement between the parties, who is going to provide what. How do you get in the front of house is by pre-communicating with the teams. 
with all parties and come to an agreement. When you love somebody more than yourself, you're invincible and ready to be brave. When you love somebody. All right, you guys happy with that? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you a really affected version of the vocal, just in case, so you know how wet it will get. I feel the love. I feel the love tonight. So it's not gonna peek out or anything. Any, not gonna bug you at all. No, it's been good. I've actually had to add more wet. What makes a good technical rider is the information and details within. The more complete and the more updated the equipment list is and the information in the rider and diagrams of setup, the more the production crew can better and accurately prepare for the setup. In this fast changing game, maybe one minor change of a band is a catastrophic change for the production crew. Creating your technical rider. A tech rider is a document that you send to the sound tech and show promoter before the show that outlines all of your technical needs. When writing your tech writer, always state what you as the artist are providing and what you are requesting from the venue. Here's the information you want to provide. How many people are in your act, what instruments they play, and what their names are. The amount of mics you're providing or requiring, and if you need mic stands. How many lines you're sending to the front of house mixing board, and what kind of lines. XLR or quarter inch, line level or mic level. Determine if you need DIs and how many. Are you using the house drum kit or using your own? If you're using your own, do you require mics and how many pieces is your kit? Are you using the in-house DJ setup or providing your own DJ equipment? How much space you need for everyone on stage? How are you monitoring yourself? Are you bringing your own inner monitors or needing on-stage wedges or both? How many monitor mixes do you need? How many minimum watts of PA do you require for sound? What kind of stage lighting do you require? How much time do you require for setup and sound check and changeover? How long is your set? Always include the band leader or manager's direct contact info. Keep in mind, this is all going to be a wish list depending on the venue's capabilities. Your tech writer should be adaptable and scalable as it can and will change depending on the venue and your spot in the lineup. Usually, the tech writer is dependent onto your show contract and needs to be agreed on beforehand so that there's no question of show quality when the big day arrives. As a vocalist, should you bring your own mic? Yes, you can. You are the artist. If you feel more comfortable about using your own equipment, you should use your own equipment. Just remember, communicate beforehand. Include it in your tech writer so that everything is expected as you arrive. In some cases where you don't get to sound check, and that you are comfortable that the system is working, let's say in a festival scenario where there's lots of people that have played before you. Your information has been passed on to the sound production team already. Uh, what I would do is go through with the monitor technician, whoever that may be, and let them know which player wants roughly what kind of mix in their reference monitors, whether it's IEM or Wedge, so that he could have a good start. And when it's time to play your set, hey, just play a riff until it's good. Don't start with your first song. And that's your sound check. Okay, thank you, Bobby. Can I get the uh, SPDX, please? I've seen most sound guys and myself. Uh, we like to do the drums first, and then the percussion, and then the bass, and then the guitars, and then the keys. Basically the rhythm section first, and then you get to the uh, more detailed individuals, like the horns, the winds, and then the vocals, the chorus, and then the main vocals. That's how I like to do it. It is a personal preference, and it is also something that attendance dictates. So if you're missing a bass player, but you really want to save some time, you would sound check without the bass player. It's always the bass player. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay. Okay. The DJ is the artist. So if he wants to bring his own equipment, then his equipment gets set up. If he wants to play on what the venue has to provide, he should be communicating these issues beforehand. So if he wanted to use CDJs and a DJM setup, then really before show day, the crew already knows. More commonly, the DJ for hip hop music, they'll wanna use vinyl records on Serato control. So they'll bring laptops 
and then they'll ask for turntable setup with specific mixers or they'll bring their own mixer. That's usually the case for the hip hop style DJs. But for the EDM big shots, they provide a rider, they provide diagrams on how to set it up. We, the production crew, will have to go search for the equipment and set it up to their particulars. Should artists bring all of their own cables? If the event is based on a production team providing the service, then no. Unless, again, it's communicated beforehand that maybe you have a special cable that nobody has. If you are responsible for the musical instrument department, which we call Backline, then you would be responsible to bring all cables and connections to make the backline systems work. If you are the person who's bringing lighting, you should bring all the power and all the data cables that you need to make that system work. Whatever department that you're responsible for, you should bring your connections and your cables and your tools to get your show on the road. You guys can now try a song. When you love somebody more than yourself, you're invincible and ready to be brave. When you love somebody more than yourself, it's so beautiful, you give it all away. Run it out, caving in. When I get that feeling, I can hardly believe. I shut it down, I'm an alien. There's a superhero in me. All right, is there anything you guys want to change? No, I feel super comfortable on stage. Does it sound good out there? Excellent. Excellent. Thank, Thank you, Jeremy. You. You're welcome. Save those settings. Save those settings. You got it. Have a good show. Thank you. I think you should include an informational package about your songs in your itinerary. A good writer would include a schedule and your set list. And within your set list, maybe try to explain what the song meaning is. And if it's a fast song or a slow song, so that they can pre-select lighting themes and motions to best suit those songs. I think you should just be nice to everyone. The show's gonna happen. You're dependent on this team. This team is relying on you. So there's a very interlinked teamwork here and the best is to be nice to everyone. What makes a good tech rider versus a bad tech rider? Well, it's the information with the riders with the most updated material and information and have the most details are the good ones. Ones with diagrams, ones with scheduling, one with set lists, one with names and what they do. These are good riders. Uh, bad riders are, I got a drums in the middle and then the bass is to my right and guitar is to the left and then we have one mic. That would be a bad one. A good stage plot should illustrate the finer details of location and size. It should include the stage dimensions. If there's any risers on top, their dimensions. Where it should be located with distances labeled. On top of that, it should have the drawings of where the drums go, where all the instruments that are, that are involved are placed, where power is needed, where a monitor or in-ears is needed. Whatever is on the input list and the output list should be labeled on the stage plot. A stage plot is a diagram that gives the sound tech a visual of what your show looks like on stage. It's usually drawn from bird's eye view. We use Google to draw ours. Show where the instruments live and if you need power and what kind of lines are going out. Also, make sure you block out any areas that are being used for dancers or special guests. It depends on the festival's scheduling, how big the changeovers are. Some changeovers could be two hours, some changeovers could be 15 minutes. It all depends. And this scheduling should have been communicated to you way before the event. I wish all the future live musicians good luck. Take every chance you get. They don't come easy. And when you do get that chance, rock it. Be humble and rock it. Make them like you. And then you'll be loved. Dude! Yes, yeah! yeah. <laughs>